I believe you may have gone through uh, that a bit, and I believe you have some idea about 5G already. So, for starters, yes, yes. I would like you to list what uh, are your doubts exactly. What do you want to know through this uh, discussion? Yes, 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 sir. Sir, uh, uh, currently I uh, know I am a beginner to 5G, so I have the idea of. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, how the call established will happen, what are the flows for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, for example, uh, I have uh, uh, doubts regarding how will the modulation schemes would get selected and uh, how will the, you know, the uh, throughput calculation will happen in the physical layer. Uh, then, uh, mm, uh, I mean, uh, how will this modulation scheme affect the throughput? Okay. Uh, then, uh, like uh, in the beginning, uh, like why do you have band select? Why yes. do you have so much love uh, for modulation schemes? You working on layer one? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. 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 I, I, I'm not working on layer one, but uh, uh, I've, uh, I've been. Uh, uh, I'm interested in learning that uh, okay. layer one and layer two. Okay. Like, Anything else that uh, you don't see on the screen? Uh, sir, one minute. Uh, and also this one, sir, uh, like uh, uh, scheduling. How will the scheduling happen? And the band. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, how will the resource allocation happens? That uh, things I have. Uh, okay, understand. I think this is too much. We won't, we won't be able to. Yeah. yeah. We won't be able to cover yes. even this much today. Yeah. <laughs> so this is already too much. Okay. So first up, uh, for modulation scheme, this part, I suggest you watch a video I have already made. Uh, the video has a heading like something like. Uh, what does it say? I forgot. Link adaptation. Okay. In that one, okay. I discuss modulation schemes in detail. Okay. okay. I'll give you a little. Okay. I'll give you a little history, a general idea about what modulation is, how it affects throughput relation. This will that general history will answer all these three of your questions. The thing is, there used to be GSM once upon a time. Okay, it still is there, of course, but with respect to GSM, we used to have a speech call. Speech call is where it all started. Everything, the data calls, GPRS, eGPRS, that evolution came later. So first, let's talk about speech call. So when we have speech call, what we essentially do is we, con we first convert speech into electrical pulses. Okay, and uh, you understand, right? So we yeah. first convert speech into electrical pulses okay yeah electric signal whatever you want to call it and those pulses are then converted into bits and those bits are supposed to be transmitted over the air okay see uh, but that creates a problem of uh, uh, errors being induced while transmission is happening you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. Since we yes. are over the air, the transmission medium is susceptible to errors. Okay. Yeah. So to counter that errors, we have to have a error correction mechanism. What do we need? We need an error correction mechanism. And okay. for that error correction mechanism, we use something called called FEC, forward error correction. Yes. Okay. Yes. So forward error correction is nothing but it's like we have a string of bits. We had this block. It had number of bits inside it. Okay. So what do we do here for error correction? We introduce some more bits. So this bits is not actual data. FEC is not actual data. It's something new that we are adding to the actual data that needs to be transferred. Does that make any sense? Yes. There yes, was something yes. that needed to be transferred. We added something extra to it. Why would we do that? That is not a prudent 
thing to do because uh, because it reduces our medium's capacity. Medium's capacity is fixed. Now instead of carrying uh, relevant data, it's also carrying something we added, which is not actual data. So we do this to make data more secure. It serves two purposes. One is error correction and the other is error detection. So basically FEC are additional bits also known as parity bits. So you must have heard about Hamming codes and all you must have read them during your college. So it's similar. So uh, on the other end, the receiver actually when receives this thing is used. FEC is used. This security that we have added is used in order to determine whether we received a correct uh, correctly encoded packet or did we use uh, did we uh, get something which is uh, corrupted either it's a corrupted packet or it's a correct uh, decode so is that okay that part okay you yeah. understand that yes so yes. we yes. had so we had a transmitter here and we had a receiver here when transmitter sent something over the air it was data and plus security parity bits which help okay understood yes now yes. the thing is that the link this link this also doesn't belong uh, this also doesn't always behave in a same manner okay some play sometimes link is working better sometimes link is working uh, not so good sometimes link is working bad there may be many reasons many reasons for that see any area that has a good line of sight okay uh, behaves better than an area which is completely covered in tall buildings because those buildings add different kind of effects called multi path fading etc etc make life difficult for us similarly the other interferences may also cause channel to be downgraded sometimes it may cause channel to be downgraded uh, for a short while not permanently for example uh, let's say uh, an, an airplane passes through that's an interference uh, yeah. through that particular area that particular geolocation and there may be many such things like that basically there may be some uh, some communication mechanism itself is passing through and that can interfere with the frequencies then interfere with the bursts so those things can happen so link we need to understand doesn't always behave in the same manner now the thing is another important thing is the ratio what ratio should we take how much data should have how much security so okay. there is not a permanent answer for that there is not a one answer for that that this ratio should be taken so in case of gsm we started with a single specific ratio which was good enough okay that it would uh, keep the data secure and we we would be able to have uh, error correction properly but the thing is when the link was too good if the link was behaving very nicely too good then that particular fec ratio that we chose this ratio was not optimized it was taking extra space and when link was working even badly then even this would not save it and it will trigger retransmissions. Okay. Retransmission, of course, uh, affects throughput because you have to transmit same uh, data multiple times. Okay. So yes. when we uh, came on to a particular uh, this ratio, data to security bits ratio, we kind of thought that, okay, let's assume the link will be behaving averagely. Okay, so if it's not behaving too good or it's not behaving too bad. So in case if it was behaving, uh, it was behaving averagely, this was fine. This codec was fine. This was called codec. Okay. And if the link was not behaving averagely, if it was behaving very nicely, then we were wasting space. If it was behaving very badly, then this was not enough and we were triggering retransmissions. Do you understand that part? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So now the thing is, uh, then we came on to something else. Another thing was launched. I think it was somewhere around, around uh, 1999 release of GSM. I don't know when exactly it was. 
but it was called AMR call. AMR meaning adaptive multi rate call. So in this one, they introduced a call which can adapt according to the environment. If environment is too good, the rate of codec would be different. Adaptive multi rate, multiple rates of codecs would be supported. So if link was behaving too good, we would have less security. If link was behaving too bad, we will have better security. If link was behaving averagely, we would have average security. Do you understand that part? Yes. Sir. yes. So to implement those codecs, what those how those codecs are implemented, that's what we call coding scheme. You must have heard a lot about MCS, 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 right? M in yes. MCS is what modulation and CS is coding scheme. So CS is basically directly uh, implies how much data are we securing? How much parity are we adding into the data? Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. And this whole process is called link adaptation through different coding scheme codecs. We are adapting to the link. If link is, link is behaving nicely, we are putting less security. If link is behaving badly, we are introducing more security. And that's why we are calling it link adaptation. We are adapting to the link. Link means okay. the medium of transmission. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. So does yes. that answer your question about uh, code uh, link adaptation and coding scheme? Uh, yes. Now, now the thing, how it would directly affect throughput? It directly, of course, would affect throughput. Okay. How? Because uh, the uh, the bad link will prompt us to add more security. So that would be less data and less data means less throughput True. and good yes. good link means we go to better uh, uh, better coding scheme more data and less security which would mean better throughput right yes yes so if we specifically talk about 5g in that case in 5g this is implemented via a procedure called cqi or csi channel state ad estimation okay which is nothing but basically saying that uh, this is the resource grid. If you must watch a video on resource grid that I have put up numerologies and face yes. frame structure, yes, that is a, that, that will give a good idea. So in there I speak about reference signals. So there are some reference signals that base station puts in some places and uh, UE knows what those signals are. So you just read those signals and since it already knows what those signals should be, what power there should be, etc, etc, all the properties. So it compares what it was when uh, Gnode was putting it up and what it is now that I'm receiving based on the differences, it derives uh, how the link is behaving, how much the reference signal deteriorated while reaching to me. This part is called channel estimation. Based on that, it says it uh, sends a channel state information to Gnode B. Okay. In which it has one CQI channel quality indicator. Yes. Okay. Jahan bhi samaj nahi aana hai, wherever you feel like it's getting more, just let me know. Okay. 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 So based on CQI, then e -node, uh, G node B decides which coding scheme should be appropriate and which modulation scheme would be appropriate. Okay. And we already know what that means and how that affects throughput. So I suppose this part, you know, MCS throughput relation by now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so there's yeah. that, there's that. And now let's talk about modulation specifically. What modulation is? We have specifically spoken about uh, the coding schemes for now, right? Yes. So modulation, have any idea what that is? Uh, yes, like uh, quam, uh, we use quam. No, no, modulation, modulation. I'm saying. So modulation is a technique in which we make a signal travel longer. And how can we do that? Yes. To make a signal travel longer distances, we only have two ways to do it. Either increase it, uh, its amplitude too much or increase its frequency and frequency. carry it long distances. See, uh, if I want someone who is at a distance from me to hear me, then either I'll shout. Okay. So either I'll increase the... Uh, amplitude okay the power of the signal or i will use a phone and what phone actually does 
it uses a carrier frequency a frequency that is that can travel longer distances okay and it will superimpose my signal onto that frequency and uh, on the other hand on the other end we will extract the signal from the carrier frequency okay so yes. the part of putting my signal my voice onto a carrier frequency is called modulation okay yes now uh, what are modulation schemes the thing is uh, can you understand that it is modulation i don't think so <laughs> anyways so let's say uh, let's go a while back and there used to be a voltage signals to code by bin uh, binary symbols basically bits okay so if this is going to be a, a signal that is not analog it will have two levels you must have heard that voltage levels 5 or 0 yes, okay yes. so the signal will go something like this um something like this either it's zero in an interval or one in an interval or zero twice or one three times or zero something like this okay yes now tell me in this particular sim simple duration how many bits i can indicate on one symbol how many bits i can indicate uh, that is uh... based on the schemes we one bit one bit i can indicate only one bit one bit yeah, yeah. okay one symbol takes up one bit yeah okay huh. but that's not so good so somebody yes. came up with a different plan he said that okay instead of why not instead of having five levels why don't we have four levels and of course zero now for a same duration keep the duration same we have let's say this this signals now tell me in a same in this one how many bits i can indicate one two okay initially we had two levels either we had level 1 l1 or l2 so we had only two patterns that we can indicate either we can indicate zero level 1 is zero then level 2 should be one but now we have four levels okay now we have four levels so since we have four levels now each level can accommodate two bits so it can be 0 0 it can be 0 1 one level can indicate 0 1 one level can indicate 1 0 and one level can indicate 1 1 okay understand what i'm trying to say yes yes so there are multiple voltage levels so how many levels we should have hello hello four voltage levels here how many levels should we have come on come on speak up that. i didn't understand this uh... so we were coding only a single voltage level okay so uh, if we have two levels how many bits we can indicate on each level if i say want to indicate two bits here 0 0 okay uh, then then this then basically two levels do not offer me four encodings it only offers me two encodings that will leave me to treat this as 1 and treat this as 0 yes but yes. if i have four levels it give me four encodings this can mean something else this can mean something else this can mean something else yes. and this can mean something else so yes. in that way i can have two bits on the same level because two bits encoding is completely covered in four choices yes so how many levels should we have four levels okay okay why not one why not 1000 levels what if i had eight levels if i had eight levels then i would uh, i would be able to encode three bits three yes. bits three bit encoding required eight levels because 000 then 001 then 010 
वन जीरो 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 वन 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 जीरो वन 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 जीरो एंड वन 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 थ्री बिट एनकोडिंग रिक्वायर्स एट लेवल्स सिमिलरली फोर बिट एनकोडिंग रिक्वायर्स सिक्सटीन लेवल्स सिक्स बिट सिक्स बिट एनकोडिंग सो इफ वी कैन सेंड टेन बिट्स इन अ सेम लेवल इन इन सेम टाइम बेसिकली बाय इंक्रीजिंग द लेवल्स वाई नॉट है थाउजेंड लेवल्स you you get what i'm trying to say why not make yes. a thousand levels here so the thing is we cannot do it just because we want it if we could do everything we wanted the life would be very easy and very i don't know but we cannot do everything we want so the problem with increasing levels is that it is very error prone at one particular time we did not have technology to support it we did not have very fine instruments that can differentiate between these two levels actually these two so while modulating we would only use the modulating schemes that can actually have uh, that can actually work only on two levels 1 and 0 so we, and as a result we would have things like bpsk which would indicate only one bit per symbol but then technology got better theoretically we can make a thousand levels okay the thing is practicality so things got better we got better technology we got finer instruments and we became qpsk compliant you must have heard uh, so you must have known you must know already that qpsk can carry two bits per symbol yes this was one now this is two okay yes you must have heard something about egprs have you GPRS, oh, eGPRS. Okay, so you are young. So when internet started on mobile, it started with GPRS. Okay, yeah. then came. Uh, this was under the GSM umbrella only, and after GPRS came eGPRS. So even now, when in certain remote areas the connectivity goes down, instead of seeing 4G or 3G or U written on your phone, you see G or E. So eGPRS. used uh, a specific uh, modulation scheme which was called 8 psk before that the maximum that we had was 2 bits per symbol so when egprs was launched it was like a really big deal that we could carry 3 bits on a simple uh, on symbol duration so gp egprs was the first one to make this leap from 2 to 3 okay and okay. now now you know very well where it is going so we have uh, 16 qam it can make it can Im implement four bits on a symbol then we have 64 qam this has six and 256 qam has eight bits on symbol yeah. now tell me what what effect will it have on throughput seedhi si baat since we are sending yes. in same time four duration bit. we here can send six bits here we can send two yes. bits So of course throughput will increase here. Increase, yeah. Okay, so that answers your yes. question here. How modulation scheme impacts throughput? Throughput. Coding scheme we already knew. Modulation schemes you now know how it impacts uh, uh, the throughput. Okay. Okay. And uh, now uh, the thing about how they are chosen, or and what's the drawback? First of all, what's the drawback? The drawback is these are more error prone. Okay. Again. Mm -hmm. we are uh, traversing on uh, uh, over the air these levels have are far apart from each other so there's a uh, little chance of uh, this symbol mixing into this symbol inter symbol interference will be less even if it deteriorates a bit here the the levels are more fine they are more close to each other so this symbol can merge into this symbol very easily okay so inter symbol interference is more more error prone basically as if you go up the more bits you want to put in more symbol so these uh, mcs schemes become more error prone so again if the link is behaving good you will use 64 if link is behaving bad you will downgrade to qpsk and how do we decide that in 5g through cqi as Thank we you. saw so in specification i would want you to go to the specification now and check the table you will see a table where uh, it actually maps cqi to 
different modulation orders and different uh, modulation schemes which coding scheme so there are 28 uh, modulation and coding scheme some of them have same modulation and different coding scheme okay understand that in yes. little bit yes sir yes sir okay to understand this part better you should actually go through that uh, particular uh, video of mine i covered that this all part in very much detail in that video link adaptation video is there all of that sure. is there and i have the advantage of a whiteboard there so if you are interested in this one so this will be very helpful Yes. Okay. This let's not do it today. It's a big. Uh, uh, it's kind of a big concept in itself. So okay. this will take more more time, much more time. Anything that you see, I have not covered in this part. Uh, sir. Uh... even i have to study this once again yes so that if yes any doubt so that that's uh, why i i i actually prefer small bursts yes. small classes because uh, that helps but yeah i do have uh, some videos about allocation also if you go through if you decide to go through you can go through a video that covers downlink resource allocation type so maybe it's that what you are looking for yes okay Okay. okay mr bhardwaj i believe if uh, uh, if it's okay i would like to close it here for today and uh, yes. if you have another doubt we can schedule another session and we can do some more uh, brainstorming together yes, yes you know how sure. to reach me thank right you. yes 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 thank you man sure. thank you i really thank enjoyed you. this you. today yeah uh sir this 11th you told right that is uh, like in the 5 volts base uh, band base band be... these things i have told in very you know broader picture it gets very yeah. deep it goes very deep for now i'm just telling you in a language that you would understand for now if you go very okay. deep this is the part of base band processing uh, the digital signal processing in base band the topic itself gets very deep that is another kind of chapter in itself okay for now what you have to understand is that we uh, if we want to put more uh, bits in a shorter duration in a simple duration then what we will have to do we will have to work with more uh, levels of the voltage to decide what pattern is being transmitted see uh, in in normal uh, in very basic digital transmission we would say okay if the voltage is high it's one if it's low it's zero only two levels yes okay but if we want to work with complicated systems like 5g we cannot have that that is not sophisticated enough we have more requirements we want enhanced mobile broadband we want more bit rate so we need to be sending more bits in shorter span okay so in, instead of indicating high and low We indicate multiple levels of voltage. Okay, so those are the basically levels of uh, voltage to indicate uh, where uh, what pattern we are sending. A level is nothing but the pattern. It just indicates the pattern. If we want a two a single bit pattern, we only require two levels, right? Zero yes. or one. Yes. If we want two bit patterns. we have four yes. patterns for two bits 0001101 and 11 so yes. we would require four levels for that if we wanted three yes. bits okay then grab a pen and a paper write it down you will see eight levels are required to yes yes do that and so on yes. so the levels keep on increasing as we increase the number of bits okay yes so yes. that is a complicated process in itself to implement first of all and it is more error prone so we increase that we increase we call them better modulation schemes because they can put more data in but they are very error prone also there is always a drawback 
so we only use those modulation schemes when the link is behaving very good if the cqi is being reported 14 and 15 then only we will go to 256 qom otherwise we won't go to 256 qom okay and once you will study core set and pdcch you will see that the control information that we send over pdcch we don't even use qom there that is considered a very very sensitive information because if you are not able to read PC, PDCCH, everything is gone. You won't be able to get any data or you won't be able to send any data. So that makes PDCCH very important. It's very sensitive information. So we always code it using QPSK. We never use QAM for PDCCH. Okay. okay. So these are the modulation yes. scheme basically. On baseband level, it will get very deep. So for now you have to understand that what what the general idea is general idea is same time duration more bits and how do we do that we uh, we don't use just high and low voltage level we use uh, multiple voltage levels okay okay so if you don't have any more doubts i suppose we can call it a day and yes we'll meet some other time